Hi friends, let's have a very short video on difference between deoxynucleotide and dideoxynucleotide that is used in Sanker's DNA sequencing procedure. Let's start with deoxynucleotide. Deoxynucleotide, as we all know, it is a normal nucleotide that is present in a DNA molecule. It is made up of a sugar, a nitrogenous base and a phosphate group. In deoxynucleotide, the sugar the third carbon position is having a hydroxyl group and this hydroxyl group is essential for formation of ester bond with the incoming nucleotide. Whereas in the second carbon position there is hydrogen that makes it to deoxyribose. That means in the second position oxygen is absent. Let us focus on this sugar molecule to understand better. So this is ribose. As you see in a ribose sugar, second position carbon position is having a hydroxyl group. And the third carbon position also is having a hydroxyl group. Whereas in deoxyribose, the second carbon position has only hydrogen without an oxygen. Whereas the third carbon position has hydroxyl group just like ribose. Therefore, it is called as 2 deoxyribose. Now let us move to dideoxynucleotide that is used in Sanker's procedure. In dideoxynucleotide, as the term indicates, dideoxy, at two positions oxygen is absent. As you see, in the second position oxygen is absent and the third carbon position also oxygen is absent. That makes it 2,3-dideoxyribose. It's called as dideoxy as two dimines two, two oxygen is absent at second and third carbon position. Whereas in deoxynucleotide, oxygen is absent only at the second carbon position. Now let us see how this dideoxynucleotide works in Sanker's DNA sequencing method. So this is the normal nucleotide, deoxynucleotide with three prime OH. This OH or hydroxyl group is essential for the formation of ester bond with phosphate of the incoming nucleotide. This phosphate and OH forms ester bond. This is the first ester bond in a DNA. We have given a short video on how a phosphodiester bond is formed in a DNA molecule. You can refer that. So a free 3 prime OH is essential for ester bond formation during template strand synthesis. Whereas in the case of dideoxynucleotide, as we know, the third carbon position, 3' prime end, is having only hydrogen without oxygen. So that the incoming nucleotide cannot form ester bond, thus chain termination occurs. Or DNA synthesis, strand synthesis stops at this nucleotide, as there is no free 3' prime OH to form the ester bond. Hydrogen cannot form ester bond with the next nucleotide, thus chain termination occurs when a dideoxynucleotide is incorporated into the growing chain. Now let us make it more clear. I have given a video on Sanger's procedure, you can refer that for more. So there are four reaction mixtures, each with a different DDNTP or dideoxynucleotide. Let's take the first tube with DDATP, adenine nucleotide. So suppose this is the unknown sequence and this is the template sequence and this is the sequence we are going to find out. So in this tube what we get is as we have added ATP whenever there is an incorporation of adenine nucleotide there is a chance of formation of fragments if that nucleotide is DDATP. So there will be fragments like this here here comes the adenine and that forms the first fragment then there is adenine here comes the second fragment and there is also third fragment here comes the third fragment in the second tube the same thing happens whenever there is incorporation of DDCTP there is a chance of chain termination so here in the complementary strand here comes the cytosine so here also there is cytosine. So we'll, in this tube we'll be getting two fragments 
DTGTC and also the second cytosine DTGT from here to C, this fragment. So in DDTTP, the third tube will be getting a single fragment as there is only one thiamine residue. So DDTTP will, whenever DDTTP is incorporated at this site, this chain termination occurs. So we'll be getting a fragment like this. And in the fourth tube, there are three fragments. So here there is G. Then whenever the guanine nucleotide, dideoxy guanine nucleotide is incorporated, chain termination occurs. So we'll be getting these three fragments. In Sanker's procedure, actually what we are doing is we are actually detecting the labeled chain terminating nucleotides so if we could identify these nucleotides we can read the sequence as you see so all these sequence are arranged based on the size from smallest fragment to the largest fragment the last nucleotide incorporated will be always tdntp so it's very easy to find out the complementary strand as you see c here it is c then g then a here it is A, then A, G, T, C, A, G. And this is the sequence of the complementary strand. And this is how we use DDNTPs to deduce DNA sequence of an unknown DNA fragment. So now we have fluorescently labeled DDNTPs. So whenever this DDNTP is incorporated, we'll be getting a different color so that we can easily transform that into a sequence in computer programs. So we have given a detailed video on Sanger sequencing method and you can refer that for more. Hope you understand the concept. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsfor.com. Stay blessed. Thank you.